Ladies and gentlemen, it's Ebro in the morning, Laura Styles and Rosenberg, and we have a friend of the show. We've never sat down with this man, but I've known him since the very beginning. Give it up for Chris Brown. What's up, brother? On the hey. show. We got a lot of work to do today, sir. Yeah, man. All right, so we um, just for the audience, tune in, everybody watching, we're going to cover some uh, music off the album. We'll right, get to cool. like three or four songs. Cool. Right. I'm with it. Um, also, I want to talk about, obviously, the Trey Songs tour. It's mm -hmm. going to roll out. Um, but let's get to where you at right now. Um mm -hmm. A couple of weeks ago, your album came out. I was feeling some type of way. <laughs> I was like, yo, what what yo, yo, yo I, love, I'm the one man. that put Joel Santana on the first single. A absolutely. And I'll this dude put credit. out an album. Yeah. And he's not up here. Well, well, I'm going to do the Hollywood aspect and say, I blame it on my management. <laughs> 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 no, I'm playing. But you know, I got you. I had to come back, man. No, I appreciate love. you. Well, can you, can you tell us real quick, though, how your guys' relationship did start? Because you've always, you've always spoken a lot about Chris. So where did the relationship start so, for you guys? Someone I grew up with, since I've known since I was 15 years old, her name was Tina Davis, was yeah. his original manager. Yeah. Um, she told me, hey, I got this kid. He's super talented and invited me to, like, was it your first showcase at Planet Hollywood? Yeah, it was. It was in. It was in the city. I was like, what, fourteen at the time, I think. So yeah, yeah. that was crazy. And so I went. Saw him, he's up there doing backflips, <laughs> Michael Jackson impersonations, <laughs> singing with no, you know, acapella, no music behind. You know, he's got the amazing. So I'm like, yo, this dude is. He girls were screaming. I didn't know him. Girls were screaming for the kid. He's doing back fix, backflips, dancing like Michael Jackson and singing. I was like, yo, this is about to move. Yeah. Then they gave me uh, the Run, Run It, it. Yeah. was the record. And y'all y'all took it to another level with that. Yeah, then Enough premiered Run It one day. And I was like, this is dope, but what if Joel Santana was on it? Yeah. Which that shit just... It just went crazy. <laughs> it went crazy. Then that was it from there. And then yep. you guys just always knew each other. And like it was just yep. always cool Always like love from there. Um, even to, you know, I mean, look. Let's, we might as well get right to it through, you know, when shit went haywire for you. Yeah. You know, I called Chris like, yo, my man, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's crazy for you right now. But listen, all I'm going to tell you is be a man, mm -hmm. accept your responsibility, yep. and keep making great music. And now you back, Connor. Kind of. Oh, kind of. I mean, how <laughs> you pretty back? How do you feel? I mean, he's pretty back. Oh, you know, I'm just, I would just say I'm... Humble about it, you know. I'm very grateful to yeah. be where I'm at, you know, as far as musically, as far as, you know, just in life in general, you know, not as much drama, almost off this probation. So, it's just I'm ready to just turn up and be the best Chris Brown, you know, artist. You know, was there a time when you weren't sure that you would get all the way back and get the acceptance all the way back? Yeah, it's been a couple times, you know, because <laughs> you know I've I've been up and down, up and down, up and down. Uh, you know, dealing with the first situation that I dealt with, I thought it was completely over, but then afterwards. You know, going through other stuff and, you know, going to jail. I was like, oh, man, it's done for me now. I done went to jail, so it's oh, I'm really done now, you know. So, you know, from there, I just tried to persevere and always keep my head up and not just let, you know, what's happening in my personal life affect the music that I make or, you know, or the talent that I can bring when it comes to my dancing or, or you just see the visuals of what I do as an artist. So I just never let that kind of hinder what I, what I try to do, you know. Who kept you focused? Uh, family first, you know. I, definitely, my family for a while. I I was like really like led astray, just you know, with the wrong crowd, a whole bunch of gang members, whole you know, just doing a gang gang of stuff I wasn't supposed to be doing. So then from there, I just was like you know what, let me get my stuff together. I was mad at you for that. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> when Chris when Chris was really young, the area that he's from in Virginia, mm -hmm. you know, there's some it's cats real, it's real down there. Yes, affiliated. Yeah. So you um, know, and as he got popular. That you know, cats from the neighborhood start to come around. I knew you win once, and it's hard to be like, yo, I I, I can't be cool with somebody that I was cool with when I was a child. Um, That's a challenging situation. That he's, not, he's not the first person to have to deal with that. But yeah. then it, you know, as you got popular and as you were going through, I felt like as you were going through that transition out of that bad place, you didn't know who to trust. Yeah, absolutely. And you started putting people around you that I think I felt like was just hanging around you because they wanted to be hot, yeah. because they wanted to be in the club, because they wanted to meet hot bitches. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I felt like, oh, they just That's real. And man, I was mad, man. I was, I was like, yo, they gonna ruin this kid. Yeah, you know, I think every artist goes through that too, especially for me. Like, you know, being influential, you know, to different groups and different cultures of people. Sometimes you just you just want to be cool with just your yeah, group of peers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you don't really know. 
who to trust or who to just be like, okay, cool, whatever they're telling me is great, and whatever this person telling me is just horrible. I'm just gonna put me down another path. I don't want to go down. So, you know, after the jail whole stint, I went. I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna do me. You know, because when I was locked up, I didn't have the homies in the, in the cell with me. Hey, take my time for five minutes. I'm gonna go out. You right. know, do this show. <laughs> you know, I had to sit in that cell. So it's just like. You know, once you do that, it, it kind of makes you mature faster and just, you know, see what's really important and what your focus is and what you got to do in your career. Did you did you feel like in that period, because the drugs was an issue too. Oh, yeah. I was turning up. I was off the syrup, the Xanax, turning up, you know, but. At the same time? Yeah, you know, you, you got, that's 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 the hood, you know, I, I mean, cocktail right there. So it's just <laughs> like, for me, and, you know, I'm not ashamed about talking about it because, you know, a lot of our, our youth is doing that now, thinking it's the cool thing to do. And, you know, I don't knock anybody's hustle or however they got to, you know, do their thing. But I just feel for me it wasn't conducive to me. You know, I think I was. What did it do was, to you? I was falling asleep on video sets. You know, I was cussing people out randomly. I was doing crazy stuff. Like I was just like, man, I would wake up, ask my homies, "Hey, man, so what time we got to shoot this video?" And they'd be like, "Dude, we shot it yesterday." And I'm like, and I'd be like, "Dang!" I say so. When I when I, once I started seeing it started affecting my work and what I was doing as a as a guy and, and just your my craft. Yeah, just everything I was doing. Like it would be times I go in the studio. Like marijuana, not to you know say that's the best, but marijuana never messed me up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, it always kind of like relaxed me. I'm a hyper guy, so I was just like, all right, cool. But when I started doing you know the lean and all the other stuff, I'd be in the studio, and you know if I smoke, I go in there and write five, six songs, be done, boom. <laughs> but if I go in there and do the lean, I'll be sitting in the booth, sleep, and the music is be playing. So I'm like, dang. I say, okay, I'm just gonna go home because this is this ain't for me. So then. You know, as time progressed, I was like, you know what? Let me let me chill out and get off get up off this, cause it was just like, this ain't for me. You know, I don't want to be be the person. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be a zombie when I go meet people or, or say the wrong thing or end up punching somebody or doing something crazy like I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so because I'm under the influence of some bull. You know what I'm saying? So from there, it just was about me getting my act together. Yo, it was man. fun while it lasted, but then to get that thing I mean, out, get out, get it out you the way. You almost wrecked yourself. Yeah, man. get it out yeah. the way. Were there times when it must have been? But the times when it was super frustrating that like situations would come up in which it involved you, right? And, yeah. I'm, and I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you when you yeah. sit in front of me. I'd be someone who'd be like, "Why is this guy oh, always?" I would hear it. I I know, hear of course, it. <laughs> that's <laughs> why he wouldn't come to I the know, show. I know. <laughs> so no, but, but listen, but I spoke. I spoke what a lot of people felt, right? Yeah, yeah. Why is this guy always involved in some shit? And then there had to be times when really it was shit that got brought to you. Yeah. And and you're like, because of the reputation that had now been developed, yeah. you couldn't get away from it. Yeah, I think. I think. Once you and I try to tell people who, who are coming up in the game and doing stuff like man, how you deal with all this? Because once you start getting that label, you know a lot of people are intimidated by you one, and then a lot of people are just a, just you know they don't really want to be around that. They don't want to do business. They don't want to do business. They don't do everything else. So with me, a lot of the stuff, you know, the earlier stuff, I can say yeah, I, I had my fair share in the bull, you know, but. Definitely, a lot of stuff would, would just come out and be like, "Oh, he, he did this, he did that." I'm like, "Bro, I I was in the house, like I." <laughs> well, the most recent one that was nuts was, I see the video on TMZ that says Chris Brown hits a girl. I go, "Well, yeah. that's a fucking big oh, story. Man. Let me look at this shit." Yeah, exactly. I look at that. and I'm like, "My man, oh yeah, you didn't in the even club, touch her in the club." Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Didn't yeah. Even I, I saw that, on, and I think it's like, what was it? He was in Houston. No, but it's when the girl grabbed your face, and I think did she kiss you or she almost? I think she you. tried to kiss me, but. But I'm you not, didn't even push it. No, nah, I was just it like, was like oh, a I backed like, up. You were like, yo, it's yeah. Ebola out here. Yeah. My <laughs> <laughs> you, but, <laughs> no, I just, I, I really just was like, man. So I saw the story, but I realized what it is, is I make those publications and those things fame. I make them so much money by them posting my Your name my, gets hits. Exactly. So by them doing that, if, if Chris Brown is on a straight and narrow, not doing nothing, just he focusing on his music, his album's coming out, doing whatever he needs to be doing. That's not important to us because our, our publication is all about yellow journalism. So let's blast this and make up something so we can still tarnish this man's name. Because one thing I am, I'm I'm a, a, a leader as far as like in the culture. Not saying I'm the best, but I, I just know that when I do something, the culture move with me. You know what I'm saying? And my, my fans are so strong when it comes to certain things that they follow and they do their thing. You know, so I know that they certain people with the powers that be don't want that to be possible because of what I represent. Mm -hmm. Being a young black strong man, doing you know doing and what your I'm, fuck ups though. Yeah, and, and my yeah, f ups. But, they gon' they gon' but keep, listen. They gonna keep that on you, man. Yeah, and, and, I, I, to and I told you that six years ago. Yeah, absolutely. I was like, my dude, you ain't gonna be able to shake this one. 
Yeah, but, but if you but, keep dancing but and I can, singing, but I can eat it though. Yes. At the end of the day, yes. I can I can still you know pull my pants up, get up in the morning, and do my thing, not worrying about the past, just worrying about where I need to be going. You know what I'm saying? Because you know people gonna always bring that up. People yep. gonna always try to make that the focal point. And like yo, you know what? He did this back in the day. Well, cool, man. So you going you still stuck back there? Cool. Well, I'm I'm moving. I'm gotta, I gotta do my own move. Yo, before before we get into, we got we got Drake talk. We got yeah, get to. For sure. We got like I said, Trey songs tour talk. We got um. Let me think. What else we got on here? Uh oh, the cases. You got some cases that just yeah. Moved off off your record moving oh, yeah. forward, so <laughs> boom, he just spent his he came in with a, a lighter wallet today, just a yeah, little, yeah, just hey, a tiny bit just lighter, just a tiny bit lighter. So we're gonna do all that, but I want to get some music going off the new all album right, for sure. Uh, so, what do you want to play right now? So we can go into this one. Um, it features Janae Aiko. Okay, it's called Drunk Texan. It's one of these one of my mm. favorites off the album. So if y'all got the X album, make sure you go get it. This Drunk Texan right here. Yeah, I'm sure karuchi has got some drunk text. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that next. Said I'm all up in my feelings. Double up on the shot Got me feeling some type of way Told you I hate you, I don't mean it And the only thing that I got Is the pain that you've been feeding Faded, faded, faded All because of you And my current situation Try not to think of you Not to break the rules But it always happens When I get this way Just can't stop myself So baby, tonight I'm blowing up your line I got you on my mind And the truth is hard to fight So I'll be I'll be drunk texting, drunk texting, drunk texting you Chris Brown is here, Ebro in the morning, Laura Styles, Rosenberg. Um, how many how many uh, sales is this album? How are we looking on this album? Sales, right we almost at like I think four hundred thousand almost. Well, that's, that's pretty incredible. But there's a uh, there's a new chart that they do the Billboard consumption list. So the first week it came out, it already sold four hundred ninety five thousand. So I was gold already. So I don't know what the consumption list is at right now. But and what does that mean? That I just don't means understand. I think everything in whole because I think they oh, do YouTube something. views and single yeah, sales. and then and, and I think what they do is every ten singles or so they count it as an album. Okay. Or some some it's some crazy that they that they do it to where it's gonna actually benefit artists in the future. Because I think the big headline now is that you know what this year nobody's gone platinum, right? So yeah. they, everybody's having this Taylor Swift conversation because she might do it in a week. Yeah. Right. Um. So it becomes you know this different. Thing. It's a different brand and. Oh, it's a whole different. Yeah, you know, I'm not trying to compare. Yeah, yeah. no, not, I'm not saying us. I'm just saying in general when when, the, the, when those ones of the world put that out. Well, yeah, I mean, they, we their cult following we is a lot specific. bigger than us. Yeah, well, no, we can be specific. What? She's tall, blonde, white, country, <laughs> white, top forty, white, <laughs> white, plays the guitar, white, blonde. Like, I mean, we can. You but know. it's cool. I'm not having a Kanye moment right now, though. I'm not. I'm no, not, no, no. I'm, I'm gonna let you finish. I'm gonna let you finish. But no, I just want to be clear. Chris Brown has zero problems with Taylor Swift. He loves Taylor Swift. I love it. I love it. It's good. Um, songwriting for you. Yeah. Um, you write everything that you perform that we hear from you. You've yeah. Written everything. over the over the last after the sec my second album, I started getting more creative as far as writing, especially after the third, like when I did the graffiti album, and then it kind of tanked at that time, and then. Nobody really was messing with me radio wise because of the situation. So when I went and did um, Deuces, by the way, we you guys were because I came to you. I was like, please, I'm gonna give you this record, and I'm like, I'm gonna hold <laughs> you down. Yeah, exactly. Y'all, y'all held me down. But in that in that whole aspect, I started writing more and started, you know, creating <laughs> my own sound. I tried to, you know, verbalize what I was going through and also be able to just, you know, have my own perspective on the music I want to create. Because it's great to, because I never would turn down a dope a hit, a hit song that somebody brings to me, but it's always good to, you know, have my perspective and my take on it because I'm going to have to perform and I'm going to have to, you know, really be in love with the record, you know, so. when did Was that something you had to work on? Because I always think these days, I think of your writing as being one of your things. Like, yeah. people come to you, um, I, I, I interviewed T.I. yesterday yeah. and he was talking about the record you did, for example. Like, people come to you and you can put together a hook. That's something that you can, that you've added to your repertoire. Yeah. Was that something you had to work on or was it always in you to do that? I think I took... A lot of a lot of influences from people I worked with on my first album and my second album because I would see how they would work and how they would you know go in the studio and put certain things together. Then when I found out, okay, this is the formula of a song. You got a verse, you got a B section, chorus. Then you know getting that. Then I just started just working in the studio and I never kind of leave the studio. Like I'm always in the studio. I got like 20 tr tracks I did after my album right now. So you know I'm always continuously trying to be better and trying to put something together that's hot and say something you know I try to be in the clubs and I try to be you know 
in my realm of what's going on, so I know what I'm talking about instead of just <laughs> just saying something. Y'all gonna like it because I just said. Right, right. Can know? we can we talk on that? Because I know from people you've been worked with and knowing your management and everybody yeah. and your mother and everybody that the studio is the place that you always ran to to keep you out of trouble. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and now you have graffiti, like you the art. You know, yeah. you do your art and you know your aerosol can art and things like yeah. that. Um, before we get in and talk about that art. Talk about your demons, though. My demons? Yeah, because, you know, you... I mean, we see the trouble that you've been into, yeah. and we hear the songs that you write. Yeah, right? absolutely. Um, but all of that comes with, you know, some emotional stuff that I'm sure you've been dealing with just as being a young man, being a young black man, yeah. and shit you went through as a kid, right? I think, I think my what, demons... Where's your mind at? I think that? my demons, as of now, are are uh, being afraid of failure. Mm. That's That's my biggest demon right now. And then... Probably just like you know the old issues still come up, but I've I've had other ways like I talked to my therapist and everything else just to know how to deal with it and understand. Okay, it's about life moving forward. People make mistakes and they grow from them. So I think my only demon is just the doubt in myself sometimes. But I think that also makes me, you know, great at the same time because if I if I doubt myself, I don't always just think everything I'm gonna do is gonna be the best. You know what I'm saying? I think it's going okay. Well, I might not. I might mess up on this. Or I might do this. So it always keeps me on my toes. So I think my demons is just me being afraid of failure. Mm. I think that one thing that's happened, and I don't want to completely go back in circles, obviously, but having you here for the first time, it's yeah. a big deal. I think one of the things, like I can hear in your voice and seeing you mm -hmm. next to me, sense that the Rihanna situation obviously was a huge deal for you. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that I always was hopeful would happen is that like. We get to, I, I think people for some reason, and mm -hmm. I think understandably your team did not exactly know how to deal with it. Yeah. It was a new thing. I've always wanted to hear more from you about the, situation. about the hurt you went through too. Because there's, listen, I know I know too many people who know mm -hmm. you yeah. to think that you're a piece of shit. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I know, and like, and, and like I'm, I'm friends with and admire Mike Tyson. Yeah. I believe in forgiveness when people Absolutely. do so. I don't think that defines you for the rest of your mm -hmm. life. But I think you will find more success in people accepting you as time goes on and you're able to, to talk about to the be, pain that it caused. To be open about it. You know, I, I felt like, and even at that time when it was going down, honestly, I kind of just listened to the wrong, like, okay, we need to do this PR strategy and do this. I really just wanted to be like, man, fuck y'all. Like, And that's how I felt. I said, because it's my personal life. I'm going through a troubled time right now. You know, it's the worst thing did I could have Did you just want to go, I fucked up? Yeah, but... You, you can only say it but so many times, mm -hmm. you know, and I feel like through the years I've said it enough now to where it's like, bro, if y'all not, if y'all still on that, then <laughs> I'm feel sorry for y'all because yeah. it's just like, it's over with. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not, I don't have animosity about it. You know, I've obviously I have remorse about it and, and it's something that's really serious, like Rosenberg said. But as far as the situation, like me and her, you know, we made amends, like we, we good. Like, you know, my friend, she my friend, you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I knew that was a mistake that I will never make again. But, you know, I take in consideration, like, dang, I was 18, like, 17, 18. Super young. And I'm, I'm 25 now, so I look at back at it like, dang. And I'm still doing community service and, and, mm. and everything, going to see the judge every every month and a half over that situation. So it's something that pers in my personal life, you know, you, you definitely want to keep the skeletons in your closet. But because I'm a, an artist like me, you Gotta know what I'm saying? Up. You gotta you gotta be public about it. You have to be there, and you know everybody has their own demons and their own skeletons. But it's only how they handle it <laughs> when it's showcased. You know what I'm saying? Some people have great political speeches. I can't do that. Like I can talk about it like this, but I can give you a great song, and then be <laughs> like, "Hey, this is what it is." You right. know what I'm saying? And this is how I move move forward. But on. you tried to. I mean, you tried to go back to Rihanna. Like y'all, there was a period y'all was. We was like, wait, hold up now. Yeah. Yeah, we we was cool, man. Like I I feel like you know, and for me it was it was a lot of it was on me trying again to to, to pick up the pieces because it was you was in love, G. Yeah, at the end of the day, like so I I just wanted to make sure that it was it was still there, you know. But at the end of the day, I wanted to like how can you say it? Uh, kind of make amends to her, like you know, showing that I I could be the the man that she wanted to be. Like she so even if be, you guys were you know? past the relationship, mm -hmm. you still wanted to be like, we can have good... Uh, there's you, you wanted her to see the good in you again. Yeah, absolutely. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. When Rihanna opened up to Oprah, mm -hmm. was that the first time that you... When you saw that, 
I remember there was a point where she was crying and she said, the one thing that got to me the most when she said that she felt that everybody painted you like a monster, but her only concern was you, mm -hmm. how you felt about the whole situation. Yeah. So what went through your mind when, when you saw her? I mean, it was it was a shock for me because, you know, with different teams and, you know, how camps work and they move around, you know, you see a story every day, you're like, okay, I don't know if that came from their camp or <laughs> that's just some bull they putting out. genuine. You know, so when, when I saw it, I was like, okay, well, cool, now it's... Now she's showing me that, you know, I she 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 cared because I didn't know for a while, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, dang, she really do care. I said, this Oprah, man, she on TV, like, oh, dang. <laughs> I was like, man, I don't know. I said, I, I would have did that, but I would have been like, dang, let me let's let's make a phone call first or something. So you wanted a warning? <laughs> yeah, but but I was actually I was actually um I was actually moved by it, you know. So at the end of the day, that's when I knew we could be friends and talk yeah. you know what i'm saying it, it wasn't a barrier of you know us us like resenting each other or being away from each other you know what i'm saying so but cool. then now then after that then she starts dating drake <laughs> life goes on man. i mean, I mean you know, listen I mean, and that didn't necessarily have anything to do with you yeah, at, at the end of the day like i look at it like this man for me i'm content with who i am so whoever decides to move on or do do they thing but you was Yo, cool. you was, but you I, wasn't I was happy. But I was tight. But you also got to consider I, that was in the the Chris Brown era when I was like, I'm finna, I'm finna. <laughs> no, that's I'm, mine. You yeah, was, you yeah. in your mind. You yeah. was like Rihanna's mind. Yeah, I was in my bag. You know, so I just, <laughs> I just, I just really, I just really went at that at that time. I was, I was just all about running up on dudes, and when I see you, it's this and all right, you know. But but well, you felt she did it on purpose. Uh, she gonna be mad if I said, but I, in a way, I do. At the end she of the wanted day, to hurt you a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, you know. And, and that's and understandable. It's understandable, you know. It's it's the game. We young, mm -hmm. you know, relationship, friend. But they they we do that at that age. You know what I'm saying? I think once we hit our thirties and thirty, you know, we in we in the mature stage of life. And now and we're now, not focusing on yeah, that. But then you went from that to fighting in a club. Me? With, with Drizzy? Well, the Drake bottle throwing. Oh incident, yeah, yeah. Whatever that was. Yeah, yeah. That was that was that was a, a sticky chest out contest. That was that was that's all that was. It wasn't really. It what, wasn't. what we got was that there was a fight. Yeah, it wasn't Bottles a scuffle. That was that was who got the who got the biggest account in the room. Really? <laughs> yeah, that that's all that's that was. Real, uh, by the way, that's a really good debate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to break that down. <laughs> Chris, who made the initial call? The truce between you and Drake. Uh, honestly. Their, his camp had hit up my management and they was like, cool, well, we got this opportunity at the um, the ESPYs. Yeah. We want to do a spoof. So I was like, cool. And they didn't know. They were kind of hesitant, you know, because they didn't know our temperature between each other. So I was just like, you know what, man? I, don't, I ain't got time to be looking on my shoulder, or, you know, trying to look for dudes and be upset. Like, I don't like him. Like, it just don't make me look good at the end of the day when I'm on an it interview. It won't make you feel good either. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I didn't, well, sometimes it make you feel good when you want <laughs> when you really want to get out of dude. But I'm not saying that in particular. <laughs> but when... <laughs> I tried. When, 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 see, I'm still Chris now. I ain't, I ain't no, I'm not Buddha in here. No, I can, no, no, you know? no, no. <laughs> All right, back, back to the middle. Back but to yeah, the middle. So, back to the middle. So when they called us, I was just like, you know what? I'm just going, you know. Let's break this. Let's break this whole beef thing. Let's yeah. just do do something funny. Let's and let's make light of the situation because, you know, it just, it just shows growth and maturity. Like, and I just wanted that to be portrayed I, and, you know, just be just be over this. It was a good look. It was a, it was definitely it was a good moment. Yeah, man. What were the first things that you guys said to, to each other when you first, you know, were man, face to face? Oh, we just say what up, like you know, because I don't I don't like to. If it's a issue, I don't like to hash it out. Like mm. I don't like to. Hey man, yeah, let's but talk you know about what it is situation. when you got beef with somebody and y'all come back together to do business. I've been there a hundred times. Yeah, right. You either yo, it's all good, boom boom. You dap and it's all good. Slight yeah. little hug and you move forward, or you see each other and you kind of laugh because the shit was so stupid that y'all just got into. Which one was it? It was. I think we avoided talking about the issue at that point. I, I think we just avoided it. We just was like, "What's up, man? You good? Cool, man. Appreciate you." Doing well, you it. good is code for. We, we ain't got no problems. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But you had to know the second Chris walks in the room, you know, as crazy as Chris can be, he wasn't finna turn up at the ESPYs. Like he, <laughs> I'm not at all. No, like, that's that's too much white money. I can't I can't mess that up, man. Not the ESPYs. <laughs> nah, -uh, can't do that, man. Hey, yo, listen. When we come back, we gotta talk about your lady who's been holding you down. Oh, for sure. I had an mm -hmm. issue, another issue with you. With God, the, you in issues? Listen, man. Yeah, this man. is my guy, man. All these issues, yo, man. When you say <laughs> can I just be a, the old school? Uh, a Papa was a Rolling Stone. Why, nah, why can't nah, I just be nah, the... Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> so what song you want to play off the album right now? All right, right now, let's go into Came to Do. Okay. This features Akon, so check it out. Chris Brown, Ebro in the Morning, Hot 9-7. Made up my mind. 
It ain't nothing to make you on it. Get you tipsy, a little blunt it. I pulled up in the S500. Fucked up, feeling all up on it. You know what I came to do. You, you know what I came to do. You know what I came to do. You, you know what I, oh. You know what I came to do. You, you know what I came to do. Chris Brown's here, Ebro in the morning, Laura Styles, Rosenberg, Hot 97. Yo, man, yeah. you giving us a yeah. lot of uh, you giving us a lot of gems today. Yeah, man, it's all good. Yeah, I'm appreciative. This is nice. It's We're getting a real, good. real, uh, real insight here. So you put out the song uh, "These Hoes Ain't uh -huh. Loyal." Is yeah. the name of the song. <laughs> the first thing I was mad about is you, as a, a young man that I've seen come up. First thing that hit me was, what makes this dude think that hoes would be loyal? <laughs> and do you, do you want to give a comparison? I, yes, my comparison I said today, Chris, that would be like making a song that says, "These NBA players aren't mathematicians." No, <laughs> we know that, football <laughs> but it's catchy, right? No, no, no. It was a phenomenal song. It was so, the number one hit, right? Exactly. So number one. The the whole thought process behind this, it wasn't like actually me questioning if they were loyal. Like, oh man, I know she been at his house and that <laughs> house, but she supposed to love me. Nah, I, that's that's not the case. It was basically like, you know. In, in our kind of generation, the young kids, like, you know, we go to parties, and like I said, we see it. It's, it's, the, it's like a... The thoughts, as they the say. The thoughts. But, you know, like, every other city we go. Right, 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 right. Remember that, remember that yeah. one? So it's they just don't. our version of that. Got it. Basically, like, it, it, the game hasn't changed. It's just different players in it. So, so now... You know, you go to different places. You see one girl, she's like, oh, man, I love you. And then, boom. Next day. And then you go to Trey House, and she'll have a Trey House. And then go to Drake House, she had Drake House. And then she had Tiger House. And then you're like, oh, come on, man. All right, cool. Get out of here. <laughs> like, stop it. So then the radio version comes out. These girls ain't loyal. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute now. He's I, got Chris I had to Brown say girls, had, though. I can't, no, 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 they, no. They, they But you have a loyal girlfriend. How yeah, absolutely. Yeah, how she she feel about rode that? with you through the back and forth with you and the other thing with Rihanna. You. I feel you. You, you were still kind of <laughs> egging her a little bit, right? <laughs> I used to come to the studio. She was there chilling, yep. right? She rode out with you. Yeah, for sure. So I was tight because I was like, yo, he Karuchi's riding for this dude. Yeah. And I'm speaking vicariously for every man else. Not, not me. <laughs> My girl's ride for me. I'm good. She's yeah. ride or die, though. Yeah, absolutely. How long has it been now, you and Karuchi? Almost five years. It's been like four and a half years. I've seen you embrace her a lot more on social media. You put up these cute pictures of like her at Seven Eleven, just random little photos. Yeah, yeah. she she's straight, man. I, I I dig her. Yo, he blushing. Look, I dig her, man. <laughs> she dope. You know, I, I feel like you know when you, especially being in this industry, you just need somebody that that understands you and you know understands who you are personally, except except for your name. You know, you don't have to be. You know, a big artist, so you got you don't have to be buying them bags and let me stun on you right quick. I don't gotta do all that. You know, although I do it because I love her, but you know that ain't that's not that don't come with the territory. You know, at the end of the day, me and her have a, a real connection as like best friends on top of our you know our intimacy. You think it? Could, do you think that this could legitimately be the relationship for you, and you guys could lock it down one day? Yeah, man. But you know, I like I'm scared of marriage, man. Like, why? Because I'm young right now, so I don't, oh. I don't. I, that, that's the only. That's the only thing. I'm an old man. I'm scared of marriage. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. What I'm don't saying? listen to him. He's yeah, never. Don't he's a problem. Yes. So you know, and me, Ebro, you will talk about that on another day. I've even heard you joke about having kids with her. Kids? Yeah, man. I want. I want a little. You know, I need a little Chris Brown, man, because when I can't dance no more, I got to teach him something so they can... Just wait. My man, go wait like, till he's like 32, I'm, man. I'm not, I'm not rushing. I, I, How I'm 25. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. We got like seven I years. I ain't rushing. If you, see, the thing with Chris is he's, he's been, been around, around so, so long. So many I can't years, believe so. you're only 25. <laughs> yeah. So, what, but what happens now, though? Like, uh, what do you... What's Chris? What's on Chris Brown's goal sheet right now? Like, I mean, you've had the hit songs, you've had mm -hmm. the the major tours. You, I mean, you're about to go on another one with Trey songs. Like, yeah. what's on the? What do you want to do in the next two to three years that you haven't done already? It's it's almost like basketball season when you watch it. I just want to increase my stats. You know, as far as like, I want to get MVP. I want to increase my stats. I want to be the best player in the league. I want to have my own shoe. Right. <laughs> you know, want to want to want to be, and then after that, become coach. What's on your face? What's on my face? So, what is oh, that? Oh, this this is a little little uh, how you say? It's like little gold. Those, it's a transfers. They're like tattoo transfers. Yeah, what? 
They don't. They don't. It, it's not permanent though. It's oh, yeah, you yeah, you I thought you put gold on your face. Yeah. It's, it's a gold. It's actually gold, but it's it's just a transfer though. Have you decided on a name for your air tour with Trey? We're trying to get that together right now. Like we were thinking about a uh, one night stand tour, mm -hmm. but a, a couple of artists did that before, and then we did. We was thinking about like the morning after tour. What about a Virginia reference? It can be, but but then if we it doesn't seem it, to, yeah. Then if we go in other cities, you don't, you know, it's too, you know, yeah, it's kind of be like local. Mm. So what's the what's the uh, setup? What do we expect to see when Chris Brown and Trey on tour? Is it like you know, you guys, you come out do a record, he come out do a record, you guys do records together? Like how's it? Yeah, I think because both of us do different dynamics of what we do. We still do the same, you know, singing to the ladies and everything else, but it's two different dynamics. But I, I wanted to incorporate Trey in the tour and make sure it's like. It's like the best of both worlds type. So, mm. you know, his hits, so he'll come out with his hits, and then I'll come out, and we'll have segments, probably do like a two-hour show. So so it's, both of us can go back and forth and have a enough kind of, you know, records to perform and have the lady screaming. Does Trey feel, we haven't seen Trey in a few months, does Trey feel pressure to get in the dance studio and do some work when he's about <laughs> to be on tour with Chris Brown? Uh, or is he not even going to bother? Or does he just come out in a wheelchair? No, 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 no. He should not. <laughs> no, no, no. Trey. See, see, mm -mm. <laughs> no, mm -mm. see, Trey, my brother, like, I I don't think he's going to dance. I don't think he's going to pull out any moves. And and the way I'm trying to set it up is to where this, the way we do the stage, he won't even have to dance. Like, it just, it'll because the show will be. But that's not his thing. You know, yeah. he just be up there shirtless. That's it. Yeah, I forgot. He's got other things. He makes yeah. love on stage. Yeah. We can just yeah. put a bed on stage for him <laughs> and, bring, and bring a lucky lady out there to do the old R. Kelly style. <laughs> But there is a there is a competition between you and Usher that's brewing. Mm. That I'm I'm, I mean, I'm kind of trolling that situation a little bit. Usher was up here. He basically said that he's Michael Jackson or Michael Jordan to you with regard to dancing. Well, he got an album to sell, so of course he got to say <laughs> you're trolling so bad. <laughs> he didn't say that. What he didn't say, that? What he didn't he say? say it. In what a, did he say? He said that they had a situation exactly, and that they were cool and having fun. And it's like he said. Uh, there was a time when Michael took Usher under his wing, okay. and there's been a time when Usher took Chris under his wing. He sunned you. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, like like me and Usher, like our relationship has grown in the past like year and a half, um, and you know he's he's just a cool individual. So I think when everybody does the comparisons, like oh let's do who could win in the dance battle. I'm fully confident in my ability, so I'm just, I just never, I never diss Usher, because Usher's Usher, man, you know, you gotta give him his props, his his, his uh, rap sheet and what he got is, resume, yeah, crazy. his resume is crazy, so, but, I got a little bit more, my, my legs a little fresher, so it's, a, <laughs> it's like, if they, if they do, if you make the Jordan reference, then I would have to just say I'm Iverson, when Iverson crossed Jordan. Oh, oh okay. that moment, I remember that moment. <laughs> So that's so no 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 offense, Ash, you my bro, man. But it, 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 I don't know. But you can cross <laughs> him up. Yeah. He's not giving in. I can't give in to that. Uh -uh. He's not giving in. I should dance. Yeah. Did but, you ever uh, get to have uh, <laughs> you? I will say, even I remember when I was at the most angry about the Rihanna situation. Yeah. I was in my zone. You came out and performed whenever your comeback thing that was. Michael Jackson joint. You did the Michael Jackson tribute. Yeah. And I was like, this oh, motherfucker. Oh, and he did Man in the <laughs> I said, this motherfucker. I've, everyone, there's so many people who have done a Michael thing. Yeah. And I'm always just like, stop. Yeah. You're the, you're maybe the only one who can truly do it. Oh, man, thank you, Did bro. you work at that your whole childhood? Was that just the thing you always did? Well, for me, I always was you know, a fan of Michael. It's just like if like Kobe watching Jordan and then you see Kobe do a couple of Jordan moves and you'd be like, okay, he, he looked like Jordan doing that, you know? So for me, I just, I just wanted to just make sure. And plus it was during his death. So I was like really emotional about it. So I took it probably more serious than any other performance I've ever done. So at that time, I remember I was just studying game tape. <laughs> you know, I was I was looking at the, the Billie Jean, uh, you know, Motown uh, 25 performance. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, I was just watching it over and over. Okay, cool. That's how he did that. He put his hand right here. He did that. Mm. Boom, boom. All right, I got to make sure I do it. And then from there, just watching all his videos and just getting into character for, for the actual performance. So then when we got the actual set list of the songs or what they wanted us to perform, I was like, cool. So let's make sure everything has a little piece of everything part of that that video that Michael could bring to it so you know it just came out great and I think you know he was watching up he sent a couple of angels down there to help me out so <laughs> it, was, it was emotional for you too yeah. you cried on stage yeah I was trying to sing the last song I was like yeah. man I was like it's over with man I said yeah, I started seeing the little images on the screen you know um 
they had like images of him mm-hmm. and you know him over the years i just started i just couldn't handle it no more did, i just started crying did you have any personal interactions with him when yeah you- i met him um i had met him when i was doing the world music awards uh i was like 17 and uh, i did thriller i did a thriller performance for him over there and then i remember he he met me in the back but it was so much paparazzi like you know at award shows it's just like a couple of cameras backstage a couple of fans or whatever but it was maybe like a thousand people like that crowded around his van so they was like he's not seeing anybody i just remember started crying i started crying like a little baby like i started crying and walking back to my trailer like man it's some bullshit i'm tired of this <laughs> like and then they, and then they called and it's like no michael's looking for you so i took off running boom jumping over shit and everything got got into the actual um van with him me and my mom sat in the van and it was him and his mom so and he was just like hey how you doing real cool humble guy and I was just like I was just in shock and I've never been like that in front of anybody like it could be my favorite basketball player favorite football anybody I was just that's like, Mike though I was like man that's crazy like I almost ready to cry just watching the dude so that was cool I, he called me on my 18th birthday um, wow that's, you know, pre- so, that's pretty cool yeah so that was dope but we have to ask this again <laughs> <laughs> hold on two <laughs> one did he call was it him who answered when he picked up the phone <laughs> no it was someone else. So, like, so, hold for Michael Jackson. Exactly. So, so at first they called. They was like, my my, uh, my manager was like, yo, Michael Jackson's on the phone. I was like, stop playing with me. No, Michael's on the phone. So I got the phone. Then he's like, please hold for Michael Jackson. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, cool. So then they waited for maybe like two minutes. I was like, he's gonna get on the phone. <laughs> so then he actually got on the phone. Hello, hello. I was like, hello. I was like, man, it's crazy. Michael Jackson just called me for my birthday, man. <laughs> so that was good. And then the thing that made me really emotional was I was supposed to go see him. The day he died, like at at the Staples Center, he was rehearsing for mm, the, for uh, this, this is, is it tour. Yeah. And me and Jamie Foxx were supposed to actually go to the uh, venue and just watch the rehearsal. He wanted to show us the show, and I was like, man. So we were supposed to meet him at at uh, twelve o'clock. No, at nine. And then they said, okay, we're gonna push it back because he didn't come in yet. So then they was like, okay, twelve. So I'm just waiting, anxious. And then from there they was like, well, he's sick today. I don't think he's gonna come in. Then I saw on TV. Wow. And I was. I, I was devastated. Well, wow. Rosenberg really wanted to know though, because I tell him a story about. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> about Mike using the N word when he's on the phone when he's like real comfortable with people. Oh, what's up, my nigga? <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever get that? You nah, get that? if I got that, I, that, I, would, I would have been saying that. Ask, <laughs> ask Usher would, about it. Usher's, Usher's got yeah. it. Oh, that's crazy. I heard it once myself. That's crazy. Was, but yeah, no, that's what he really. Be clear, <laughs> Michael was not calling Ebro. I want everyone to know. Yo, why not? Why you hate him? Right? Sorry, sorry. Right? You don't get that one. <laughs> Yo, what do you want? to play right now man off the album uh, Chris Brown's here we can go with this joint it's called X man uh, this is probably the title track Diplo produced it one of these you know I just love the 808s no, and, the, tough, and the beat tough. on this so check it out X Chris Brown Ebro in the morning Laura Styles, Rosenberg Hot 97 if you're only as good as the company keep then I'ma blame you for what they say about me When I was by myself, I was fast asleep but Since you came around, I've been up for weeks Yeah, 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 cause I've been with the wrong crowd I can make you a believer if I turn the nonsense down I keep my secrets in a safe house Better if I don't speak Chris Brown's here, Hot 97, yeah. Ebro in the morning, Rosenberg, Laura Styles. Um, Sir, you're rapping a lot now Yeah, a little bit <laughs> did, did, did this, Was this something you always wanted to do? Or, I have a theory, that when rappers started singing more You as a singer was like, nah, fuck that, I'm about to start rapping too Uh, it kind of it goes hand in hand, kind of. You know, I think before, you know, when I when I was growing up in Harlem, trying to, you know, get my music career started, that's all we used to do. Like, you go to the projects, and they don't really, the homies don't really want to hear you sing like no, that. No, the no. girls will, but you got to, you know, spit in the cypher or just freestyle, have fun, you know, with your homies. So I always thought I could be a rapper. I was like, okay, when I come out, I'm a rap and sing. But at that time, it wasn't acceptable yet, you know. So from there... And I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna just start rapping more. So I just started doing it on my mixtapes, and then I mm. remember a couple other artists was like, okay, cool, rap on this for me, rap on that, and it just started becoming more natural to me. Well, more accepted to from the crowd. Would the crowd you would, accept would you ever do a song with mm-hmm. Drake where Drake sang the hook and you rapped the verse? Yeah, you know, I, I think I think uh, Drake singing is is acceptable. It's not it's not like you know it's not. 
horrible. Like you ain't. He just not on that. Like right. and, and, and some of the. Don't get me wrong. I'm in the club singing the same. You know, live, live, like, like we get all that. <laughs> yeah. li- that was I'm, a young thug reference. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I'm, I'm listening to the same record. But it's entertaining but the melodies it, of there and things yeah, like that. Yeah, it's entertaining. But I, I feel like you know, I, I don't discriminate on them. Like I think whatever the song is if, for that culture, that movement. Go with it. And y'all do have a record, you and Drake. Yeah, it's uh, me, me, Drake, Nicki, and Wayne. Yeah, that one. That was the Nicki's only. newest single. Is yes. that the only record that you and Drake have? No, to yeah, as as of right now, yeah. Will there be more? Uh, hopefully, they got to cut the check. <laughs> I mean, Chris is very honest. I will just keep it. I mean, he does yeah. not hold his tongue. What's that check look like? For feature? Yeah. The Chris Brown getting Chris Brown on it, the song. It depends. Like cause some some people, I get a homie price too. Like if if it depends. Cause Six it, figures. Like I like the most I charge is like two fifty. Mm, that's wow. a good. That means he doesn't now, know then, you at then, all. You don't know him. Then now, does that involve you writing the song as well? Uh, I don't have to. If the song's already hit, then I get on it. But I still, gonna, I'm still gonna take some publishing though. And, and, and if they don't, if they don't, if they say oh, we don't got this much money in the budget, we can only give you. Maybe I'm taking more. Thirty. Publishing. They can only give you thirty percent or thirty thousand. Well, okay, cool. Well, I need fifty fifty percent publishing. Cause, like, cause, cause, I'm gonna get on the record, not to, not to toot my own horn, but Bro, what in the, in, in, in the past, in the past, <laughs> I've, I've, I've got, too. gotten on records, <laughs> and they became number one, and from a new artist or whoever it is, and they went number one, and then I just, I'm just like, okay, cool, hey, your career is great now, so I just, I'm not kind of benefiting from it, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I would take a percentage of the publishing, and so I can, if I'm gonna give you a number one, I need to capitalize off it as well. How much business, man. How much money did Chris Brown lose because of your past? Because I remember there was a Double Mint commercial. Yeah. The Forever song was in, uh, which you wrote, which was in the, what was the TV show? The, the Office. Office. Yeah. Which was a nice That was an amazing check. scene, yeah. too. That was, was a, dope. But that song was also in a Double Mint commercial. So yeah. you had a Wrigley situation happening, yeah. which got... Out of all as, my endorsements, I probably lost about a good $20 million. That that I could have possibly made, and that's just you sitting there being like, "This would have happened. This would have happened, and this would have happened." Yeah, absolutely. About and 20. this got canceled. This got canceled. And that got canceled over the over the time period. But the good thing about it now is that it's it's coming back around. And my situation at my label, I'm a, I'm a co uh, CEO with control. Them. Yeah, I'm co CEO with them, and I've been in like that for the last two albums. So all the money that I'm making off my single, I make fifty percent of everything the label makes. So that's how I've been able to. Ooh. Ball a little Yo, bit. Y'all can get a job, man. <laughs> y'all want to I mean, work for Chris Brown? I can do radio promo. <laughs> no, no problem. Not a no problem. problem. We got it. Let's do this. And you, you get 50% on that. But hold on. Do you care of the six? But hold on. <laughs> no, but I was going to say, first of all, how much that doesn't include the 20 million you lost doesn't necessarily include the lawyer fees, too, that you've had. You've had a, Yeah. See, the lawyer fees still being worked out. See, I, I, I we paid them. I said, bro, when I get off, when I get off all the way. <laughs> Right. You're gonna get all of your money. So right. I'm gonna pay you increments right now. You know, so So you had to write a check this week for the uh D C stuff. Yeah. Is that now so now that's all done? I hope so. Uh, yeah, I, I sure don't like writing checks for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Me too. That would really be a bad deal. I know. I'd be like, man, I gotta pay up some more. No, nah, but you know. So um before we let you go, we wanna get one more song on off the album. Yeah. X, which is you're telling us is almost goat. Mm-hmm. Um Chris Brown um is Almost. When do you get off? What is it? Probate? Your probation? I get off probation. My probation ends. I think January twenty seventh, twenty fifteen. Twenty. The twentieth. Yeah. Tw- okay. Yeah. Um. How does Chris Brown make sure at this point in his life that he stays out of trouble? Cause you still in these clubs. Oh yeah, I'm still in L. A. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, uh, red flags around. Yeah. Often. Always. I saw Chris Brown. Yeah. Walked, you know. He walked into a club when I was there. I didn't. I was with Amber, who's I know friends with Chris. <laughs> yeah. Didn't even have an opportunity. I wanted to say hello to him. He rolled in seven hundred deep. <laughs> <laughs> he lined to a booth, and I didn't see him. But that type of thing could get you in trouble, man, because it ain't necessarily you. It's your entourage. Yeah, and and and, and, or, and your friends, friends of friends. Yeah, and that's always the case with with me or any any artist that has the, those people because you know people are attached to you they want to be yeah. you know they want to be around so you might just come to the club like it's been situations i said okay it's just me and my my cousins two of my cousins and we're gonna just bring all girls in the section so i do that and then 
You see everybody else see you. Hey, my nigga. Hey, bro. Boy. Hey, what's up, bro? How you been, man? All and that's hard right. to and say no just, to someone. Then they, no, but you can say no, but they gonna still squeeze. Lurk, lurk. You gonna see them behind <laughs> you taking a selfie game, getting a selfie shit in the background. You're like, what is? This? How you get up in here? You know. Yeah. So, you know, you just I just gotta be cautious. At the end of the day. I don't know what the future holds, but I know what I, my focus is. You know, I know I know that I'm focused on my music, living my life right, doing the right thing, focusing on this art. But you know, situations I, I take situations as they come and how they come. I just know how to handle them differently now, because I'm not under the influence of turning up, right, or right. I'm not you know trying to to be something I'm not. At the end of the day, everybody know I can fight. Everybody know I can get down, do what I do, but. That's not what I'm. You feel like to as an R and B singer and light skin, you had to prove that though. Keep I, you 100, know, keep one hundred right now. No, I'm light skin, but so you I light know, skin, you know. know. At the end of the day, you get tested, and and, and a lot and of you sing and you dance. Yeah. So they was coming for you. Yeah, so and well. you got a gold thing on you. Yeah, face. exactly. So like, Yo, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but but for me, so it's just, it's just like now, you know, I don't have to prove myself. I, I'm comfortable with being a, a a singing, dancing, painting. Great guy. Like I don't. I don't have to be tough. I don't but there was some in. insecurity there. Of course, you always have an insecurity, especially young, being amongst your peers. You wanna, you wanna fit in in all dynamics, whether it's the the positive or the negative. Mm. So I, th I just think, and every go, and every person goes through it, whether they're in high school, college, wherever it is. You know, and that's why I like to preach it like that and say, look, man, be an individual, be yourself, follow your own path. You know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, you get locked up, you gonna be in a cell by yourself. Chris Brown, art, <laughs> Chris Brown artwork. Artwork, yeah. You've had, uh, I think, what, five shows now? Like actual events around yeah. art? Yeah, and you've I've been, been to embraced two. by big names. Like Ron English really embraced you, which yeah. is really big. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's that's the blessing because I just was kind of trying to be a student right. of art. You know, at first, I always, you know, I, I always yeah. used to come up here and draw on the, the desk I mean, and everything. Like this, I, I wish like, I should have kept that shit. Yeah. He'd be in my office money. with drawing all over everything. I was yeah. like, little motherfucker, keep drawing. <laughs> exactly. So so now that I'm getting the recognition from all these street artists and being able to collab with a lot of different mm -hmm. artists, it's starting to just, you know, give me a different avenue of of a, a passion and creativity to focus on. You know, my music is always going to be there, acting, whatever it is. But, you know, being able to do something other, it just puts me in a different mode. Like, I just feel like I'm kind of somebody else. So I, I could, I, if I want to buy a, a piece of Chris <laughs> Brown art, that could happen now. Well, I mean... You wouldn't have to buy one. You my homie. So, but I'm just know. saying, if I'm just saying, you know, hypothetically speaking, somebody's yeah. a, a an art collector. Yeah, absolutely. And they want to buy a piece of Chris Brown yeah. art. It's valuable now. Yeah, like absolutely. It, when I did it, what four or five years ago, when I first started doing, it, I did my first art exhibit. My biggest piece went for like ten thousand. Wow. And that was like, you know, it was like I did a a hell no kitty, not a hello kitty. And it was just like was so, but I, so what is it? What happens now? Laura's in the art. She goes to all these art shows. What yeah. happens now? So that piece now is worth even more than it was then because yeah. it always increases in yeah. value. It increases it's, it's, as, as as how the more recognition and, and the more known you are and the more demand for you. It's just like just like records. It just it just the value goes goes up. Whose art is worth more, Chris Brown or Swiss Beats? Cause Swiss is nice out here. He does some things. Swiss is also a big collector. He's though. a he's he's more of a, a collector and and a. I I, I, I couldn't answer that question because I don't know. But I feel Chris. I mean, you do a lot of original stuff, original characters. Yeah. All your characters are original. Yeah. I mean, Swiss sometimes does a little, you know, a little wheat paste. What are you saying? What are you saying? I mean, I, what you trying but, to she, say? but she knows art though. <laughs> I, I heard wheat paste. And you know, all, yeah, yeah she knows, like yeah. it's not so original. You know. Got it. Got it. Got so it. that's why I respect Chris's stuff more. So, I mean, I love Swiss, but yeah, Swiss the homie, and, me, and me and Swiss always talk about like that's probably like our biggest connection. Mm. Like I know we do music all the time, and like oh, let's get in the studio. But when we hang out, it's more on like our artsy fartsy type thing. Like okay, let's go do this. This painter just did this. Let's go look at the wall, you know. So we just get it in. That's dope, Chris Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for this guy. Are you a uh, last thing? Are you what? You dressing up? Any any Halloween costumes today? Halloween costumes. Man, I was trying to figure out. Last time I did it, I almost got in trouble. What, what, we what? went as the Taliban. Oh, oh that's God. right. <laughs> How about Kid Ink? You should dress up as Kid Ink tonight. <laughs> I should be, I should be kidding. That might work. Chris Brown, what song right now? What song you want to get into? Song off the album. Let me think. And by the way, the new flame record. What's it? Number one. What is it? number one? The rhythmic and and urban. Just number one at radio. Dude, he's just turning up, man. Right. Just trying that's to get the, the world more music. Z and all my Z fans Z that's Z listening Z too, Z man. <laughs> All the fans, listen, man. I love y'all, man. I appreciate all the support. You know, New York, everywhere, man. Yeah, I man. just, I just appreciate all the love. Uh, everybody's loving the records, the album. So we're gonna get into this song. I'm trying to think of what song it and is. And we'll have tickets to Trey and Chris Brown on tour when they announce that and get that thing popping. We'll have all and when that they fun. Finally, name it. And Summer Jam next year. You know what I'm saying? We might have a little. You know what I mean? We gonna go with Do Better, <laughs> featuring Brandy.
It's called Do Better. So let's go. There it is. I don't know why I even try But you don't want this no more I would rather leave before I hurt you And I would've died long ago if I ain't had my faith I see you starting to hate me I see it in your face My home don't feel like home Just like my heart is empty Change the number on your phone So when I call you ain't gotta listen And all your girls think that I ain't shit And they the same ones lost in the club And bitches is basic Now I'm number one that's lost in love 